everybody and welcome back to the ketogenic fasting project I'd like to thank you for watching my video and uh, if you don't mind give me a like and uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel today I'm talking about a new book from dr. Jason phone called the diabetes code I thought it was an excellent book it is available on audible uh, the diabetes code prevent type 2 diabetes naturally uh, so this is you know basically written by a doctor who's used to treating patients with medication and uh, he found that uh, a dietary approach was a lot more powerful than the medication um, like he mentioned in his previous book it was tough to teach people about diet and exactly what a carbohydrate was people uh, you find out in general are not all that aware of the three macronutrients which is carbohydrate protein and fat and so uh, his patients would go out and try and eat better but they'd still wind up eating the wrong foods so it kind of led him to uh, implement fasting you know short-term fasting for the most part and that uh, that greatly helped his uh, patients so fasting is a big part of it uh, he previously wrote the book the obesity code um, a similar book but uh, more specific uh, to obesity in general and of course this one is more specific to type 2 diabetes um, he makes the point that type 2 diabetes really is a dietary disease and so why are we always trying to treat it with drugs like insulin and metformin and all the other drugs he he goes in depth about how the different drugs work and and um, why diet itself is the important thing because of course type 2 diabetes is uh it starts with the problem of having too high a blood sugar and uh, the blood sugar comes from the diet right so when you take the uh, sugar out of the diet or the carbohydrates out of the diet you no longer need the drugs so he uh, obviously goes through a history of different diets that include fasting which is most likely one of the most uh, widely known and oldest dietary practice but also um, zero carb gets a nice mention at the beginning and so do high fat diets so in the begin in the in the days before people knew what insulin was of course they didn't know the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetics and of course type 1 diabetics aren't able to make insulin for themselves so even if you put them on a fasting diet or a zero carb diet or a high fat diet they were going to die anyways and it wasn't until the 20s when um, insulin was identified and then consequently able to be uh, synthesized or extracted from cattle that um, that you could even treat the uh, um, the type 1 diabetics at all and of course then the the treatment of type 2 diabetics became the same method and it's like well we'll give them insulin and get their blood sugar down but he points out that eventually the insulin does more damage than good and because you always need an increasing amount if you don't change the diet you just do more and more damage with the insulin I like to point out that you know Dr. Fong is treating patients um, <coughs> he's treating patients primarily with kidney disease but they usually get the kidney disease from the type 2 diabetes and they're usually also obese and so his techniques for treating these patients it might be different than than somebody like Dr. Finney, who's a researcher, who's working on, uh, on studying other things. So when Dr. Finney says fasting is a double-edged sword, it, it's not that that's untrue. It's that the context in which fasting is applied by Dr. Fung is typically very different from from the type of research that Dr. Finney is doing or or anyone else so I, I like when I'm reading a book I like to keep in in, in uh, mind the context of what techniques are being applied in so uh, the zero carb like I mentioned makes a, a mention at the beginning or an all-meat diet uh, which was one of the first diets that showed some promise 
at least in modern times. And then, of course, the famous black coffee and whiskey uh, diet, which patients were basically, I believe that was the Allen uh, starvation method. Uh, patients got black coffee and and to drink all day, and uh, they were locked in. And they got the whiskey just to um, to uh, make them more comfortable. Not that it really had a therapeutic effect. And you would think something like alcohol would would raise your blood sugar, but you know, plain alcohol typically doesn't because your liver converts it into uh, acetate or acetaldehyde and burns it as a fuel that way. Um, so it typically drives down blood sugar. I know I've tested that on myself. Now, if you drink beer or some sort of mixed drink that has sugar added to it, then you, you may well raise your insulin level. But if you're drinking just whiskey or vodka or some sort of hard, hard alcohol, and even a lot of dry wines, they tend to lower people's blood sugar instead of raise them. Now, it's not necessarily a good thing because like when you eat fructose, your liver turns around and, want, and often turns that fructose into fat and stores that fat in the liver or the other organs which it does not like to do which is not healthy it will your body will your liver will do the same thing with alcohol uh, if you don't have an, enough caloric demand at that time when the alcohol is being processed and the the uh, metabolized alcohol is, is routed into storage as fat it winds up in the liver so fatty liver disease from alcohol or things like fructose have the same result that you wind up storing fat in the liver which eventually will scar the liver which eventually leads to cirrhosis of the liver and of course uh, one of those things we don't, we're not necessarily aware of is fatty liver disease is also the most common disease in the world unfortunately it tends not to affect people until later in life when they've had it for a long time and didn't even know it so uh, he covers the usual suspects glucose glycogen insulin hyperinsulinemia ins insulin resistance and hormone control you know it's a, a reoccurring themes in uh, the low carb movement so you uh, you get some reinforcement he did cover some new ground that I hadn't heard covered in other books even though you know this is somewhat redundant from a lot of the other books I've read or covered um, so, uh, I still highly recommend it, recommend this book. And for anybody who knows somebody with type two diabetes, which is just about everybody knows somebody, if you think they have any chance that they'll read this book, I definitely recommend, uh, you, uh, try and get them to read it because it's, it's a game changer. I mean, I know people that have to, that depend on insulin and take, uh, metformin along with other drugs. So. Uh, aside from the expense, th those those drugs all have serious potential side effects. Uh, some and some people a drug like metformin extends your life, and other people it shortens it. So that that right there is a gamble. But we know insulin or insulinemia is destructive, just like high glucose is destructive. You know the sugar in your bloodstream is is. Uh, is attacking proteins. It's gnawing away at the proteins and um, causes what they call glycation. So an insulin in 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 itself is doing separate types of damage. And then when you have insulin resistance as a result of that, you often have leptin resistance. So you have a syndrome that that keeps building with multiple symptoms and multiple system failures or system interruptions. He goes over lots of studies, and I like that uh, Dr. Fung tells you the name of the study and when when the study was taken place. A lot of people just say studies show this or studies show that, and they don't really tell you that enough about the studies. So, so you go to look it up, and you're not sure what studies they're referring to. But Dr. Fung is quite clear. So he also talks about the overflow phenomena, about how one of the problems with type 2 diabetes is that the cells are already full of sugar so why why take drugs to cram more sugar into the cells because it just advances the diseases associated with type 2 diabetes like blindness and ulcers and all kinds of horrible stuff like neuropathy and blindness and 
then requires you to have uh, horrible procedures like amputations. So uh, I already kind of covered the uh, non-alcoholic fatty liver syndrome. It doesn't really matter if you get if you get fatty liver syndrome from alcohol or or from eating too much fructose. Um, there's still the damage is the same. So. Um, he also gets into both the micro and macro destruction of blood vessels, uh, which is very interesting because you get to see, well, in this case, with tiny little blood vessels, this damage happens. With the larger vessels, you know, things like blockage happens. You build up plaque. And he also talks about uh, uh, fatty muscle tissue, which is something I, other people hadn't really covered in the books I'd read so far. So that uh, was a nice uh, a nice addition to the uh, growing repertoire of low carb discussion he also discussed a Randall cycle which I had never heard described before um, and uh, you know, of course talks about the typical uh, situation where you can burn fat or you can burn glucose and typically the studies are starting to show that burning fat of course is healthier than burning glucose it talks about the fatty infiltration of the other organs, including the, the pancreas. The, the, of course, that leads to the beta cell dysfunction. And uh, there's not much fat that accumulates in the in the pancreas. It's a very small amount. But uh, when you go on a start fasting or go on a low carb diet and you start burning off fat, your body will try to get rid of the fat in the organs first because it's the most detrimental to health, apparently. And so that means things like your pancreas and your liver start giving up those fat deposits quickly, which is a good thing. Uh, it talks about fructose and its deadly effects. Um, sugar is toxic. He talks about Dr. Lustig in his book, The Bitter Truth. And I believe he also brings up um, Dr. Yutkin in his book, uh, The uh, 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 Sweet. Gosh, I can't remember pure sweet and deadly um and then he discusses the concept that the dose makes the poison you know insulin in, in proper amounts is is a great thing it's uh, when you have very high levels and prolonged levels of insulin that it becomes a problem um he talks about the the uh the recognition of high glucose versus high insulin damage in the body as well, which is nice to have a clarification of that just for more thorough understanding. So type two diabetes is the leading cause of heart disease, cancer, kidney disease, dementia, blindness, amputations, neuropathy, and medical costs. So if, if that's not enough reason to want to stay on top of, on top of it, uh, I don't know what is. Uh, Pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes has hit that tipping point globally where more than half of the population of the world has type 2 diabetes or diabetes. And 75% of all medical costs are related to, to these diseases. So diet and fasting versus medication. Obviously, diet and fasting is far less expensive than taking a medication while you're eating food that's actually causing the disease so that's kind of the takeaway from the book you know why treat a dietary disease with a medication so anyway suffice to say i really enjoyed the book i listened to it twice i highly recommend it even if you've covered a lot of this material in other books i don't see any harm in, in getting a better understanding and a slightly different perspective you know the, you get a different perspective from somebody who's doing research versus somebody who's treating patients versus somebody who's training athletes and so on and so forth and uh, I, I think it's all part of the growing body of knowledge because you know every couple of years the books come out there's new data you know so anyways thanks again please subscribe please give me a likes and please uh, stay curious and uh, help move the information on so other people can benefit from it. Thank you.